the plot twist at the end of all of this is going to be not that I've been a secret AI uh, that is constructing pre-recorded shows. And I'm not saying that this episode is pre-record. I'm not saying that. It's not. It's not a pre-record. I would never say it was a pre-record. Even if it was a pre-record, I wouldn't say it was a pre-record. It's not a pre-record. But the plot twist at the end of all of this, at the end of this nightmare, you know, this long, hard road into hell, is going to be that, in fact, it was you that was pre-recorded all along. Everybody in the chat, everyone that's changed their name to USB 3 to wind me up in the chat, uh, well, I've got news for you guys. You're going to die, okay? We're all going to die. <laughs> and you guys are going to die as well. And you're not going to like it, but it's inevitable, okay? And the twist, the uh, look, there are going to be various twists at the end of this film, directed by M. Night Shalamanamanam. One of the twists will be that, as it turns out, I've actually been an okay guy all along. Weren't expecting that one, were you? Next twist is going to be that, in fact, it was you lot that were pre-recorded all along. And this has been some sort of bizarre and elaborate ruse that potentially I've played on myself. That it could be some sort of Fight Club Tyler Durden situation. I think I'm going to bed, but as it turns out, when I go to sleep, I actually just get up again as someone else, and I've been programming bots... <laughs> programming bots to effectively catfish myself on YouTube and on the internet. Uh, I've then decided that the best thing to do about that would be to start a cult. Start a death cult. Fine. Seems reasonable, doesn't it? It's not like I've got anything better to do. I genuinely don't. I mean, I can't imagine. I mean, you know, what am I going to do? Go out and say sea sea turtles? Fuck them. You know, I'm, we're starting a cult. That's what we're doing, okay? I've set my heart on it, and as they say, you know, you can do anything you want if you set your mind to it. Anything you want. I mean, maybe... Maybe you can't take five cocks in the arse at once. Maybe not. Maybe if you really set your heart to it, maybe five is too many. Someone posted... I, this just jogged my mind. Was it D or something posted? A tweet from a Brighton-based porn actress... Um, having just done four in the bottom at once. <sighs> I'd like to see it. I don't have to pay for it. But just really, just to look at it from a logistical point of view, you know, I just, I don't see it myself. I like, hmm, it seems, unless you've got some gentlemen with some extremely long wangers, long, quite thin, almost prehensile wangs then maybe it's possible but just four regular geezers I don't know how you're going to position yourself it's complicated but again you know maybe I'm wrong maybe just if you put your mind to it if you really knuckle down focus on just that one thing you know I've been reading that book it's called The One Thing it's a sort of motivational business guy thing it's really if you clear out all the other stuff in the way, all the little things that are getting in the way and realise what's really, really important. And if what is really, really important to you is taking four dicks in the arse at once, you'll get there, you know? You're not going to do it first try. You've got to work your way up to these things, haven't you? You've got to lay the groundwork, the foundations, yeah? Focus on the fundamentals. Find some lube. You know, you you're not you don't just steam into this thing, guns blazing and bum all open wide. You've got to get your bleach first, haven't you? You know, you don't want to you don't want to ruin the whole thing. Well, like you filmed it all, you're showing it to your friends and family. Hey guys, come round, I've got something to show you. I've really achieved my dreams. You know, you, I've been quiet recently on social media. You can put out one of those. Hey guys, sorry I haven't posted much recently, and people will be like, "Don't worry, I didn't even notice. I couldn't have cared less." But I've been focusing on me, a little bit of self-care, a little bit of, you know, just focus on your goals, focus on your work. So I'm now really proud to present this to you. I've taken four cocks in the arse at once, you know, and then they're like, I'm very happy for you, obviously, but you didn't get it bleached. And now I'm unfriendly. And you know what? I'm not going to unfriend you. Just going to put you on mute, you know. So that's, 
That's the worst one, isn't it? The si- that's the proper silent treatment. Because you know, when someone unfriends you or they block you, you know where you are. You're like, okay, this person fucking hates me now. That's fine. I can deal with that. I know where I am. But when you when they've put you on mute, like, they never like my posts anymore. You know, something I said. That's something I said. I just what's going on? Why have I got this? I don't know. Guys, you can achieve your dreams if you want. Just knuckle down and you'll get all of them in the arse at once. I believe in you. We're going to coffee and mains. Steady job and a couple extra potatoes. That's all I want. You're getting on. You're pushing 30, Sluggy. You know, it's time to think about getting some ambition. Oh, I always figured I'd live a little bit longer without it. Don't forget, kid, that what you're trying to do here is to be bright and chipper and entertaining and, and intelligent and sort of glitzy. And that's funny. And it's, it's, it's kind of cool. And it's interesting. And it's edgy. And all of that. It, it puts that facade of momentary charisma on you, and if you don't play that out, you actually fail. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Coffee and Memes on Threshold.fm and YouTube. Ah! Guys, there's some good stuff in the news today. Don't you worry about that. We're going to get into the hangover curing cat that's on sale for 185 grand. That will be fine. Loch Ness Monster. Scientist set to reveal plausible theory about the mythical beast. <whistles> Can't wait for that one. Uh, Abigail O'Leary of The Mirror uh, reporting on that shit. Um, uh, coffee fans. Coffee fan gets embroiled in escalating customer of the week war. With unknown nemesis. That sounds like a complete waste of time. I don't know why I've even got that up and get rid of that. Fuck that shit off. No need. Absolutely no need. Uh, Walmart wanker. An electric cart stalked woman. A 65-year-old uh, man in Iowa. Uh, tailed victim while exposing slash stroking himself. Um, picture in your mind what that gentleman might look like. 65. Overweight gentleman. Um... Just imagine in your mind, with your mind's eye, what he might look like, and then compare it to what he does look like. Um, no! Here. Walmart wanker, an electric card storked woman. Um, yeah, there he is. He looks pretty much what you might expect such a fellow to look like. August 26th. Um... As if navigating Walmart on a Saturday wasn't enough of a nightmare, imagine turning around and seeing a bloated Iowa pervert tailing you in an electric shopping cart while exposing his penis and stroking it. Um, well, keen to get into that later. Um, latex Halloween scars from home bargains compared to entirely more X-rated prop. Yep, looks like a gash. Looks like a shaven uh, snatch uh, that is in the grips of a particularly powerful menses. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So you could run your gash card through that if you needed to pay for something. Um, that's hilarious. I, I'm, I'm, are they going to take them off the shelves, apologise, shut down the whole business, go bust now? Latex Halloween scars on sale at Home Bargains have been causing a stir for their resemblance to something entirely more X-rated. Horror movie star special effects were spotted on sale at the bargain store in Newton Abbott, Devon. The gory props are designed to mimic a wound. Bearded axe wound, some might say. Uh, but after a picture of them was posted on a local Facebook group, spotted Newton Abbott, they sparked a very different reaction. Looks like a minge, someone posted. Many compared the latex scars to a vagina. Um, the social media users baffled at the design. Like, yeah, I mean, it, it does look a bit sort of um, Jeffrey Dahmer, doesn't it? Uh, it does look like a psychopath, a serial killer, cannibal, uh, real, some real Ed Gein motherfucker, yeah, has removed uh, a, a, a vagine. <laughs> and, yeah, but like, what else is it going to look like, you know? Did, you're going to make that, there's a scar, you put it onto your face and you put some stuff around it to make it blend in, then it's not going to look like a vag anymore, is it? But, you know, you could add a few hairs, sprinkle it around, give it a vajazzle, you know, and you've got yourself a whole different, you've got yourself a sort of DIY sex change there, haven't you? Um, 
if you just want to try it out for a little bit. And why shouldn't you? God, it's your goddamn rights as, as a human in a you know in Western democracy, liberal Western democracy. Go around, stick two or three of them on. That's how you're going to get all four, four or five dicks in at the same time, isn't it? You know, multiple entrances. Makes sense, doesn't it? Like, think smart, not hard. Come on, guys. Why am I doing all the thinking for you again? Guys, look, I've plotted out your dreams for you. The dreams are to take five at once. Uh, now I've told you how to do it. Look, there are six there. Easy. And you've still got your bum hole free for additional access. You know, tradesman's entrance. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> You know, you can get a men working at rear t-shirt. Kim, why does it come down to me to have all the best ideas? Ugh! Guys, I left job in medicine to become porn star, but I hate what it's done to my parents. Yeah, I can see, I think if I was a parent, and of course, I'd only want my kids to be happy and to do what they love, but to see your daughter... Um, who's not young, 35, um, go from being a doctor. Oh, she's now a stand-up comedian. Okay. I mean, that's worse really than being a porn star. I mean, God, can you imagine how disappointed you're, you would be in your child? They became a stand-up comedian. I mean, my mum weeps every day and rightly so, you know, when she goes around, when my mum goes to, you know, dinner parties, book groups with other middle-aged well she's reaching beyond middle-aged now you know she's not an oap but ain't far off she goes to these you know book groups you know uh she speaks to her friends her friends so what's, what's um what's your lad doing now what's what's he going oh he's doctor you know he's, he's actually trying to be a heart surgeon oh yeah that's good. Oh wow, brilliant! What what about about you? Oh, he's a uh, runs a runs a construction business now. They're turning over millions and millions a year. They've got a massive housing project on the outskirts of Sussex Village. Oh, what's that? Oh, oh, and how's Will doing? What's Will been up to? He does a YouTube show. It's got a toy lobster. He spent ten minutes the other morning talking about fitting four dicks in his ass. It's a goal. It's a life goal that he wanted to achieve. He's got a Patreon and a podcast. Uh, oh, has he? I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, is he still? Is he still doing stand up? Oh, he's thinking about going back to it. He's thinking about going back to the open mic circuit in Brighton. He's thinking about trying to get a tight five minutes together. Just a little, just a little tight five minutes he was thinking about. He was thinking about doing some jokes about vegans. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry. Oh, does he still get his music played on Radio 1? No. No, not anymore. Not since Annie Mac unfollowed him on Twitter because of what he said about Michael Jackson. Not since then. He's not been playlisted. Not for a while. Oh, is he going to go and do another, another tour in America? No, I don't think so. Not now. Not now Donny T's in charge. Well, that was more of an Obama years thing. Not since, not since the conviction. <laughs> not since the conviction. I don't think they'll have him back now. <laughs> it's patreon.com slash slash FM. You can go there and maybe give him, give him $10 a month. He'll read your name out at the end of the show. <laughs> Oh, I'm glad to hear he's doing well. Oh, poor mum. Press F, press F uh, to, pray, to pay respects uh, to Alison Rankin, my mother, uh, my muse. Uh, the only good woman I've ever met. 
Guys, um, shoot throwers, let's talk about them, let's listen to them, let's enjoy them. Uh, Siren? Siran? Siran. 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 It's called Paradigm. Uh, It's a great record, it's on RAM. Let's play it now. Trying to raise cash to pay a man to change his name to Kenny Ken. Back to about with Kenny Ken. This is a naughty little number, isn't it? This is definitely a contender. Anyone who says otherwise is either a liar, a communist, or both. This is great. This is Paradigm by, I'm guessing, Siren. Spell S Y capital R A N. I guess due to personal reasons. Congratulations to Big Reesey. Big Reesey boy, who's now a papa. He's now a daddy to a small, uh, kind of. Ooh, I guess, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's obviously um, problematic to assume the gender. Let's call it baby self. Yeah, man, that's Paradigm by Siren. It's on Wham Records. like the artwork as well. The Paradigm EP. Uh, so that's a bit fun, isn't it? Definitely contender for Shoe Thrower of the Week. 
Fine, absolutely fine. Uh, right, let's get into this fucking hangover cat. Hangover curing cat on sale for 185,000 quid. Not bad. Going to need a few more Patreon dollars for that one, though, I'm afraid. Um, although, that's it. We could all club in. And then we could, I don't know, get push for some sort of delivery system whereby anyone who was particularly hanging could um, alert something. Maybe there'd be an app and uh, like a courier could bring the cat over. I don't know how the, I don't know. I don't know how the hangover curing cat works. I don't know what his methods are. I don't know what sort of system. Maybe it's a hypnosis deal. Maybe he is magic. Maybe he just, he's very clever he's he's ascertained he's he's got some sort of secret potion um maybe it's glutathione is that that's supposed to be a thing that helps your system metabolize alcohol maybe it's just stocked to the fucking gills with glutathione i might have got that wrong maybe maybe he maybe he gives you those sort of vitamin ivs they're meant to be the shit right they're, if you're really hanging they're meant to be the boy intravenous vitamins you would expect so right because you can get all manner of gubbins straight into you i mean there that's the elixir of life like you get all your sort of um what are they called your antioxidants and that and stuff because when you eat antioxidants don't do fuck all your stomach acid just breaks down and goes to shit it's a blag so if, so if you see any products out there like the antioxidants it's, it's lies but you get them straight into your blood Woo! now you're in fucking business oh i feel like you can run through walls Anyway, let's find out about this fucking cat. If you've got a pet, you're probably well aware that uh, seeing their cute, fluffy little faces eases your hangover slightly. Yeah, except when it's bloody my dog barking at the neighbours or something. Um, but one Russian guy is so convinced that his wife's British short hair pet cat has actual hangover curing properties, he's put him on sale for 185 grand. Small price to pay if you felt anything like I did on Sunday. Well, Amelia Ward, maybe you should be less of an alcoholic. Uh, Mikhail uh, Shiponov, who lives in Rostov-on-Don, in the Rostov Oblast of southern Russia, says it also protects against the evil eye. Wow, that's a fucking result, isn't it? Can't argue with that. To have a bloody cat around that can protect you against witchcraft? Result. I guess it's because it's a grey cat, not a black cat. <laughs> Who knows? He listed the British breed on avito.com, a Russian classified ads website saying the mystical cat can work miracles. Touch. In the ad, uh, Shiponov claims the two-and-a-half-year-old cat is friends with uh, Domovoy, the god of the household in the Slavic pagan religion tradition. Uh, stay with me here. Okay. Um, it is claimed that the cat protects the house from the evil eye and troubles and cures a hangover before adding, her big eyes are bewitching. Cured. Oh, this cat is so cured. Hey, cat, who gave you permission to be so cured? Uh, it's starting to sound like a wind-up, isn't it? Not really, no. Um, sounds pretty plausible to me. The ad goes on to describe the cat saying, an active, funny cat. Uh, what else could you wish for? I don't know. Can it do backflips? Um, will it increase my support on Patreon? Uh, Shiponov told local media that there are two cats who currently live in his house but do not get along well, which prompted him to part with one of them. Why did you pick the mystical hangover-curing miracle cat? I'm not sure. Maybe the other one is even better. He also added that his wife, who owns the cat, is not happy about her pet leaving, understandably. So it seems she's put a hefty price value on the gorgeous cat uh, put, a hef put a hefty price on the value the gorgeous cat brings to her life, which is a sweet 15 million rubles, about 185 grand. Well, it's a good-looking moggy, I'll say that. Uh, I like its sort of orange eyes. Um, I'd say the sort of head-to-ear ratio is a success. Uh, solid whiskerage, um, that works. Uh, obviously, it's missing its front feet, but hey, what can you do? You can't have everything. Uh, even that amount of money would not get me to part with my cat. I don't think so, anyway. Yeah. I reckon if someone turned up and stacked 185 grand uh, on the table, you'd kick that cat straight out the window. Shiponov said that several people had already called him, but none have agreed to, pay, agreed to the price, weirdly enough. However, maybe recognising that even a gifted miracle cat, 185,000 is potentially a bit steep. Uh, he said the price is negotiable. <laughs> give you 400 quid 500 quid 
but you've got to change the cat's name to Kenny Ken back to back with Kenny Ken. Come on. I'm made of money here. I'm not... <laughs> what's, what's Will been up to on the show recently? He's by a cat that cures hangovers. Oh, <laughs> really? Oh, wow. That's amazing. Oh, and your lad? Oh, he's, um, he's a lawyer now, yes. It's corporate law mainly, about a thousand pound an hour. <clears throat> Fucking Laura. All right, let's find out about Nessie. What's going on? Perhaps we'll refresh that, see if we can get the video going. Loch Ness Monster Scientist, set to reveal, is there such a thing? Set to reveal plausible, quote unquote, uh, theory about the mythical beast. Okay. Nessie fan from Hong Kong spots Loch Ness Monster on live stream. Uh, the global team of researchers, led by Professor Neil Gemmel, used environmental DNA sampling of the waters to identify tiny genetic remnants left behind by life in the highland. Um, there he is. He looks like a flat earther, quite honestly. Um, what's that full of? Come. What's going on here, mate? He's from New Zealand. Pfft, coming over here, messing with our locks. Eh? Messing with our mythical beasts. Pfft, disgrace. Scientists investigating the Loch Ness monster monster claim that they have revealed a, claim they will reveal a plausible theory about the mythical beast after taking DNA samples from the lake it supposedly lives in. A global team of researchers led by Professor Neil Gemmel used environmental DNA sampling uh, of the waters to identify tiny genetic remnants left behind by life in the Highland Loch. Uh they then established a detailed list of all life living in the water. During the research project launched last year, 250 water samples were taken from the length, breadth and depth of the Loch Ness. The DNA uh, from those samples was extracted and sequenced, resulting in around 500 million sequences that have now been analysed against existing databases. Professor Neil Gemmel of the University of Otago in New Zealand will reveal the full findings of the study in September. Pfft, what cocktails? Reveal them now! If you know, what are you sitting on it for? What are you waiting for? More retweets? Fucking prick. He said, uh, there have been over a thousand reporting si reported sightings of something in Loch Ness which have driven the notion of the monster being in the water. From those sightings, uh, there are around four main explanations about what has been seen. Our research essentially discounts most of those theories. However, one theory remains plausible. Tell us what your fucking theory is, you budge. As creatures move through the lock, they leave tiny fragments of DNA through their skin, scales, feathers and fur, feces and urine, uh, which can be used to identify the creature. Okay. Oh, that's a fiberglass model. <laughs> Fuck you. Um, Visit Scotland said the Nessie phenomenon is worth millions to the Scottish economy, with hundreds of thousands of visitors travelling to Loch Ness and uh, Drummer Drochet every year to catch a glimpse of the mythical monster. You can also stop by Alistair Crowley's house, uh, if you so wish, as me and my father once did. Unusual items previously found in the loch include a 30-foot-long Loch Ness monster model discovered on the Loch Beach a uh, lock bed in 2016 during a sonar search. They must have shit their pants when they saw that. Uh, Kongsberg, Kongsberg Maritime and supported by the Loch Ness Project and Visit Scotland. The model was a prop from the 1970s film The Private Life of Sherlock Holmes directed by Billy Wilder and starring Robert Stevens and Christopher Lee. Um, it is believed the model sank after its buoyant humps were removed. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there's some banter to be had out of buoyant humps, isn't there? But pff, it's not for me. Not today. Not today. Uh, Christopher Lee is a f funny character. There is a video somewhere. I wonder if it's on YouTube. I'll perhaps find that another time. Maybe that's one for whiskey and memes. Of him doing an... <laughs> him, him doing acting uh, lessons. Like, he, he sort of like... A, a sort of unprompted kind of self... Um, the sort of autobiography to camera and with some sort of I'm doing a bad job of describing this sort of um, tips to young actors to be a little bit more like him so out there somewhere we'll find it who cares um, look a few more bits for you actually while we're here there's this edit bits on Shogun it's called Undertone
find the smile still we soldier on For we must fulfill the times It's been left too long Let me change our ways and make the right Can you feel the undertone? The fear behind the smile Still we soldier on But we must fulfill the times It's been left too long And I know we realize That we've been brought up on a lie Who really cares when the people cry? I don't know Edit featuring Ryder Shafiq. It's called Undertone. Ryder Shafiq was on the Sam Benger bit. Eno remix. Sure. It's on Shogun Audio. A lot of records are these days. I'll try a little bit abrupt, but yeah, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. You know, maybe they're new to the game. Yeah, maybe they're new to the outro game. A lot of people ain't considering the outros anymore. A lot of people who listen to the show now are considering their outros. I'm happy to do that as a service, happy to rekindle people's desire. The desire for the outro. Guys, Pornhub joins fights to clean up plastic pollution with dirtiest porn ever. Pornhub out there doing good, doing better than you. Just think about that, okay? Masturbation, by its very nature, is an activity we typically keep to ourselves. Okie dokie. Uh, indeed, many people, wrongly, feel quite ashamed about the whole thing. Well, thank you, Jake Massey. Thank you, Jake Massey, journalist for Lad Bible, for doing work to get rid of the shame surrounding masturbation. If Jake Massey says that it's wrong to feel ashamed about whacking your little piece of meat, to beating it like a red-headed stepchild, <laughs> if he says you should not be ashamed, then by God, you should not be ashamed. No need to go to Catholic confession. No need to sit in a small booth and talk 
to an aged male priest about how you strum your meat nightly while looking at pictures of Kira Knightley. Come on, come on, you're having that one. No more, no more, no more. Do not be ashamed, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies, do not be ashamed for ringing the devil's doorbell. Because Jake Massey says it's okay. However, oh no. Thanks to a new initiative from Pornhub, you can now wank with pride. Great. So not only removing the shame, but actually making people proud. Why can't we have stuff that's just sort of neutral? Yeah? No need to be proud of your wanking. I'm not saying... I mean, no, he's just joking there. But this is the thing now with, like... <sighs> look, just... Is there not some stuff that can just be neutral? Like, you know... <sighs> I'm actually proud of my polyamorous relationship. Fuck off. Just be normal. <laughs> Do whatever you want. I don't give a fuck. Um, uh, the Dirtiest Porn Ever campaign... Oh, hold on. You can now wank with pride, safe in the knowledge that you're actually helping to clean up the planet. You're not, though, are you? Because no one on Pornhub is paying for it. I know they make a lot of money out of it, I guess, through the ads or whatever. Go on there and click the ads if you want to help. Don't just go on there, blow your load all over your laptop, watching, pff, I don't know, Lisa Ran or something, honk down three, three basketball players at once. Just, you know, you got, you got to splash the cash if you want to, you know. That, why can't they? Look, they could have slogans like that. Smash the cash if you want the gash, you know. But no. Anyway, let's see what see what they're up to. We've got a video. I presume it's safe for work. Come on, guys. Okay, it's a beautiful desert island. It's beautiful. It's lovely. Green. Bit of sandy beaches. Nice, clear water. Palm trees. A sexy couple. Uh, bottom, she's got a nice ass. Uh, they're strolling on the beach. More shots of the ass. He's feeling the ass. Oh no, there's rubbish everywhere. Yeah, lots of rubbish in the sea. Bad times. Fish dead. Uh, she's still got a nice ass. Um, they've got flip flops on. They're having a nice time. There's rubbish everywhere. Her ass looks great. They're running into the sea. There's a water bottle in the sea. Um, great ass. Uh, she's more shots of the ass. Um, plastic bottles everywhere. Nice ass. Sexy. Very sexy. A lot of rubbish, though. She's going to honk him off. Oh, baby Jesus. She's pulled his kegs down. Uh, there's someone cleaning up rubbish now in Pornhub uh, hazmat suits. And he's getting he's getting a nosh. Incredible. He's a bit skinny. Um, oh. Um, okay, so they've got a porno, porno with lots of rubbish on the beach. I see what they're doing there. I like it. They're using their powers for good. Which is a rare, which I presume is rare for the porn industry. The Dirtiest Porn Ever campaign will see the giants of adult entertainment donate to non-profit organisation Ocean Polymers, uh, which aims to help preserve oceans by transforming our relationship with plastics and waste. How much is donated is in your hands, quite literally. More wanking jokes from Jake Massey. So here's how it works. Basically, Pornhub has made a new film starring Leo Lulu. Leo Lulu. Leo Lulu, one of the site's most popular amateur couples. Okay. The film is shot on one of the world's dirtiest beaches and, surprise, surprise, sees the couple bonk each other. However, the film does have a trashy twist. In order to highlight how rubbish can ruin an otherwise beautiful scene, you initially won't be able to see the couple's intimate areas, which are obscured by mounds of trash. But after a few minutes, a cleaning crew begins cleaning up the litter on the beach, revealing the pair in all their naked glory. Corey Price, vice president of Pornhub, said that while their website might be laden with filth, the world's beaches shouldn't be. Hear, hear. He said... As it states, 12.7 million tons of plastic can be found within the depths of our oceans. What's, that's, what's perhaps even more shocking than that, like, since scientists predict that there'll be more plastic than fish in our ocean in only 30 years than that, are we? So I'm going to personally spend 8 million fucking quid on loads of raggy fucking fish and throw them in there just to even out the balance in that lake. Ocean pollution has grown to become one of the most significant global issues in our lifetime, and it's only getting worse in that lake. 
that's why it's imperative that we use our platform to raise awareness and inspire change and that, not just for the time being, but generations to come. We're a dirty area of the porn up, but that does not mean our beaches need to be. Oh, it's a woman. Sorry. Well, whatever. Corey, it's a, you know, it's a sort of a gender neutral name, isn't it? She said, the initiative and support from, from porn ups inspired and appreciated what, I oh, know, is that someone from the, from, uh, from the, from the, oh, uh, yeah. I think you've missed out a bit here, Massey. This is someone else speaking. Um, uh, she said, the initiative and support from Pornhub is inspired and appreciated. This is presumably whoever runs the charity. Whilst I'm sure that some, uh, for some it may not initially appear the most obvious match for our project, we are thrilled that Pornhub has engaged with us and displayed a commitment to utilising their voice and reach for positive action. Uh, we are all part of the problem and must work together to find solutions. This is a brand with significant global reach spanning all demographics. Uh, so it's a very effective platform to raise awareness and support for the crisis we face in our oceans today. Uh, it would be great to see more companies of this size and stature uh, take the same responsibility uh, with the audience. They engage. So I guess the sort of um, takeaway from this is, even if a bunch of wankers can clear up the beach, maybe you can clear up the beach as well. Um, that's my message to other big companies. Not to you lot. Not to me. I mean, I'm just going to sit on my ass, my fat, hairy, unbleached ass, and just take bags of plastic, single-use plastic bottles and just throw them off the end of the pier, trying to hit seagulls with them. Good. If you, um, if you fill them up with other plastic bottles, you, get, you grind them down. And uh, also, you more, if you get plastic, what you do is you get plastic straws and you heat them up so they melt, and then you can pour them into the into the plastic bottle and then get a bit more purchase on it for when you try and hit the seagull. And uh, and then just burn a few tyres, you know, just when well, I'm bored. I find that if you, you, you set fire to a tyre and roll it down the street, you're not bored anymore. It is a really solid cure for boredom. Just just putting that out there. That's, that's a good one. Um, also... Setting fire to cars, just whole cars. I mean, make sure you own the car, you know, you did it on private land or whatever. But that's an exciting pastime. Um, and obviously, you know, old cars, they've got to go somewhere else and they might as well burn them. I think that's, that's a good idea, isn't it? Maybe it's not. Maybe it is. <laughs> uh, what have we got? Oh, yeah, talking to cars, um, getting broken down. It's a bit of fun. Creamfields campers furious. After vehicle broken into and stripped of parts in Festival Car Park. Okay, so it looks like a very upmarket Range Rover. And, God, they really have gone to town on this this one. Oh, it's Massey again. Um, oh, lots of, happened to lots of people, have they? On Monday morning, the majority of people leaving cream fields were presumably feeling more than a little worse for wear, following a weekend of excessive drinking and insufficient sleeping. But the headaches of many festival goers were worsened upon returning to the car park. Uh, where they discovered the, that their vehicles had been dismantled and stripped of parts. Where is it? Uh, Manchester. What a surprise. Um, all I'm saying is this wouldn't happen in Hove. <laughs> but they said that they had re received reports of five vehicles being targeted at the dance festival in Warrington. Um, is Warrington in Manchester? I don't know. Add adding that those responsible most likely used a large vehicle to flee given the size of some of the parts stolen. According to the Manchester Even Evening News, uh, Chief Inspector Julie Westgate from the Cheshire Police said uh, some of those affected were stranded as their cars were undrivable and had to be towed. God, that's a pain in the ass, isn't it? Uh, it's not just the inconvenience of the victims, it's the cost of the damage done and their ability to get to work after the bank holiday weekend. These reports are being taken seriously and we're investigating a number of lines of inquiry. Um, the suspects... Uh, must have required a large vehicle to transport them uh, from the site due to the size of the items stolen. Uh, I'd urge anyone uh, who is in the nearby area, blah, 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 blah. There's a good video, I think it's from either Romania or Bulgaria, of, um, so <laughs> there's a uh, sort of, you could kind of say it's a tradition, um, but a lot of um, Western Europeans buying property in Romania, Bulgaria, other Eastern Europe 
parts, just leaving it empty. It's an investment property. Come down, oh, it's a nice house, cool, we'll buy that. Just whatever, sit on it, park your money there. Anyway, then they'll come back to it like a year later and it's just gone. <laughs> like literally there's nothing there. The hut, there's just, just like, what What the hell has happened? And um, there are basically groups of uh, like travellers, gypsies, I, you know, not quite sure what the correct term is, um, but the, just basically just go and dismantle the houses and, and take them and uh, sell the parts. And there was a film crew that when while there's a whole load of them just dismantling this house, <laughs> I just go out to interview them while they're doing it. And um, they say, why are you stealing? Uh, why are you stealing the house? And one of them answers, we're not stealing it. We're picking it. <laughs> it's like a picking fruit. <laughs> just, it's amazing. The yeah, absolute audacity of it. Um, you got <laughs> credit where credit's due. They don't give a fuck. Like, yeah, some some idiot from Kent's bought this, and they're just leaving it there. It's empty, and uh, so fuck it, we'll have it. <laughs> fair, right, fair enough. Yeah, why not? There's a video somewhere. It's very very funny. Right, what we got? Let's have one more one of these fucking shoe throwers. Ah, oh, there's a. Where are we? Oh, now we've got to go all the way at the bottom. There's a marquee bit that I don't know. Did we play it last week? Maybe we did. Maybe we didn't. But we're playing it again. No. All right. Look, let's have shimmy tantrum desire. Nice bit. Might have potential. I bet you, Mr. Mert knows about that video. Hold tight, Smithers in the chat, my boy. Coming up at 11, your gal, my friend and yours, power gen, 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 gen. Bringing the positive energy, the positive vibes, the positive ions. All the way through to one o'clock. So all of you listening on YouTube, make sure you get over to threshold.fm straight after. She'll be bringing the big guns. For real. 
is a choice bet. I'm not sure if it quite beats that siren record. But yeah, it's nice. Tantum Desire going hard on the outro. Just another 15 seconds left. Uh, that's Shimmy uh, on the Blue Moon EP. Tantum Desire on Technique. Yeah. Yeah. Storm Area 51 Festival gets official go ahead, but no one's going to see them aliens, according to tech correspondent of the Metro, Jasper Big Dick Hamill. Just because he's got an enormous wang, he thinks he can let his journalistic standards go to the dogs. Uh, an event launched in the wake of an abortive bid to storm Area 51 and see them aliens has been given the official go-ahead. Early this year, more than 2 million people signed up to a Facebook event and pledged to break into the research facility en masse because they can't stop us all. Now, a music festival called Alien Stock will be held in the event's place, suggesting that there will be no bid to discover whether alien technology is hidden inside the base, deep in rural Lincoln County, Nevada. Organiser, Matty Roberts, sure he's on the Patreon list, uh, 20, told Metro, wow, uh, we got approval for our final frickin' permit. <laughs> uh, there he is, Matty, outside the gates of Area 51. Um... He also sent us an image of the social media analytics of the event and showed us a photographic ID in the form of a Californian driving license. Why? The data showed that more than 3.6 million people had responded to the original Facebook page and it had reached 10.5 million users. Matty appears to have posted the event as a joke, but it quickly became a meme. We asked May if he... M Matt? Maybe? Fucking Hamill. To let that big wang go to his head. Um, if he had communicated with Area 51 and the US Intelligence Service before cancelling the original event. He replied, The only word from the base so far is that the Air Force spokeswoman basically, say, basically saying it's a live training ground for the US Air Force and trespassing is strongly discouraged. Uh, really, though, it amazes me how smoothly this has gone. I think the majority of Lincoln County is just very excited to be part of something global like this and pieces keep fall just falling into place. I reckon tens of thousands of people are going to die. <laughs> It's going to be one of the biggest... It's going to be effectively be a genocide. Um, we asked what performers uh, were lined up, and he replied, we have performers lined up, at both massive and small ones, local to me and my planning partner. The event itself will be free. Yeah, it's going to be... It's, people are going to die. Um, all we're planning to charge is for parking and camping spaces. People are going to die. Matty added, I'm so excited for this, man. Uh, it's the biggest thing I've ever done, and it's so cool. Um, I'm so excited to see how this goes. <laughs> uh, we also asked Matty why his driving license was expired, and he says, I've never had a passport, but my driving license has been expired since my birthday last year. My car hasn't been running since, and I haven't bothered to pay for a renewal fee for it because I can't take domestic flights, because I can take domestic flights and everything. With that, my social security card. Ah, oh, that's a hell of an interview, Metro. Wow, you're really, really focusing on the big questions there. Really prying into the important, the important nuances of the Storm Area 51 saga. Permit has now been posted on the original Storm Area 51 event page, along with a statement, we had to jump through some hoops to make this legitimate. Alien stock is happening. Uh, just got this bad boy approved. <laughs> So many people signed up to the original event that the US Air Force issued a warning to anyone thinking of trying to infiltrate the facility. Area 51 is an open training range for the US Air Force and we would discourage anyone for trying to come into the area where we train our American armed forces. The US Air Force always stands ready to protect America and its assets. <sighs> I want to see those aliens. I want to see them big old alien titties. Come on, man. That's the fucking dream, isn't it? Mum sets up school uniform swag shop in response to soaring prices. Uh, sorry, mama. I do not want your swag. Guys, uh, end of the show. Yeah, what day is it today? Wednesday. 
Cool. Power Gen will be up next in in, in but four minutes uh, with the Positive Energy show for two hours, playing uh, Shoe Throwers of Plenty and bringing good news to combat the absolute surge of noxious shite that pours out of every orifice of coffee and memes. Guys, thank you to everyone that is supporting on the Patreon. You're wonderful folk. I love you dearly. I love you aggressively. I love you in an awkward, inappropriate manner that would probably have me fired from any position of power. Uh, thank you to everyone who's on the VIP list. It's Greg Cornford, Oliver Hooper, Tom Ryan, Reese Moss and Squidgy Beats, Paulie Hutton, Kieran R, Michael Kozitsky, Matty Tompkins, Dave Long, Joel Potter, Cole Murphy, uh, Sam Howard, uh, Tony J, Richard Patterson, Tom Cam, Stephen Harris, Matthew Bullard, Jerome Van Thunderbutt, Mike Pye, Lillian, Sub Richard Franks, Thomas Hall, Joe Ryder, John Finnison, the BDR crew, Peter Blashford, Austin Grief Cooper, Gennady Lightfield, James Parry, Hando Bartento. Lady Squiffington, Liam Underwood, Dan fucking Morris, a uh, guy with no STDs, Ames MC, Josh Williams, Rob Humphrey, Shibby T, Kaka Shiva, Dan Elton, Tyron Wilmer, Mr. Pope, Duff, Chris, Sultan, Sussi, Superior, John Bass, Nicholas Lawsey, Chris Breaks, uh, The Build, Chris Abartheson, Odin Breaks, Odin Bates, Lee Fuller, D, General Gen V, Flaxis, Matt Wright, Grant Sullivan, Tom Robinson, Dan Smasher, Connor Smythe, Kevin Kaiser, Chris Shaw, uh, Cosmic Woff, Meat Life, Nick Brock, Sean Simpson, Robin Carr, Hugh Dana, Sarah Hunt, The Hitch, Marcel Tech, Will A, Ben Virgo, Dan Tweed, Dope Zalazar, Big Watch, My Hill, Mighty Danny, Nick Fleming, Carl Lewis, Gordon and Liz, Carl Williams, Ton Skipper, unfortunately it's George DC, Anthony Sharp, Claudia Loveshmere, Benish, Drem Roche, Timid, John Forsyth, Anderson, you're a bunch of bad motherfuckers, I love you all, you're wonderful people, Snips, anything to say on the subject? Let's see them alien bumholes. Fair enough, that would be, that would be my next port of call after trying to clap them alien cheeks guys i'll be back tomorrow morning at 10 a.m there'll be a rankins records tomorrow there'll be a rankin radio tomorrow evening uh that will be for the uh rankin radio patreon people only uh if you're not if you don't realize there is a new series a brand new season season seven of rankin radio it's just me and jim uh talking about uh, how he's overweight and lives in a bed set and just uh, and just how how he's able to put up with uh, such a squalid lifestyle guys until tomorrow morning though uh, enjoy Jen for the next two hours um, she is your private dancer a dancer for money and any old classic hardcore records will do um, so until tomorrow enjoy yourselves I love you goodbye <laughs>